He is one of the country's finest football writers. He's also a massive Nottingham Forest fan. Danny Taylor from The Athletic on the season so far, the January transfer window and the might of Steve Cooper. Next. Danny, fantastic to see you again. Um, let's talk about the thing that everybody's talking about, the, the transfer window, first of all. Uh, how do you judge it from a, a Forest perspective? Um, well, we were just saying, weren't we? You know, it feels like a long time ago since since we sort of woke up and were analysing, you know, Bong, Dear Carby, De Costa, and trying to sort of like get excited and think that, you know, this, these could be the players that, that sort of made the difference, you know, so... Um, yeah, I mean it's exciting. It's um, it's it's different. You know, it's kind of not what we're used to. You know, I think that's twenty eight players this um, this this season we've signed. You know, and obviously, you know that that obviously brings its own scrutiny. You know, like I mean, a lot of misreporting. A lot of people don't really understand the context of why they've done it. There are times when you're kind of a little bit like you know, certainly towards the end of the summer, you're kind of like, oh, another one and. I mean, funny enough, I remember when Serge Aurier signed, you know, he's been obviously been brilliant for Forest, but I remember like almost, almost kind of not rolling your eyes, but people sort of like, oh God, it's, you know, and you kind of like, I was having to check, like, how many, how many is that now? You know, you know so, so it's different. I think we're just going to have to get used to the fact it's different. You know, that even when we're in the championship, we could sign, you know, 12, 13 players in, in one transfer window. And you just look, if you just look at Olympiacos, you know, I think Olympiacos at one point, in the summer had something like 40 players, you know, five right backs and, you know, they sign signing. I mean, Mr. Marinakis loves number 10s and, you know, they, they, they've got like a queue of them at Olympiacos. So, so yeah, it's, it's an orthodox sometimes, but it's, um, yeah, I mean, basically we, we've just signed a three time Champions League winner. I think it's the first time we'll ever have anyone on the pitch um, who's won more European Cups than the, the club itself, you know, which is quite an interesting little stat. Um, I took her John Jess- but of course he's a bit, he was not oh, on the yeah, pitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I knew, you, I knew you, you'd have some stat there, Robin. Um, <laughs> uh, the, um, yeah, John Joe Selfie intrigues me because I must admit when I first saw, I, I quite liked, we seem to have abandoned this sort of thing of, you know, we're going to try and get young young players, you know, young, fast, want to be the fastest team in the league, want to be, you know, possibly the youngest team in the league. And these players will all have, all have like big sell-on factors. And, you know, we won't have bombs. You know, we're back to the days of our bombs. So we've, we seem to have abandoned that. But and So maybe I quite like that idea and it helped get us up. Obviously, you know, we we went, we, we took that, you know, Garner, Spence, or, you know, even if, even if they were on loan, those two, but, but so you know it 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 sort of made sense. But so Shelby, when it first, I don't know when it when it when it first came up, I was a bit like. But then I sort of saw the reaction of the Newcastle fans last night. You don't do that unless it's a really good no. player. You know, they you can pitch the Newcastle fan. I've seen people Newcastle fans tweeting, and you know, you, have, you know, you don't judge these things just on that merit. But if he can, he's only thirty. It's not like he's thirty-four. So if he can get fit, you know, he he you know he he's you know on in it. Back in his better days, when he was fit and he was playing regularly, he, you know, he was he was a very good midfield player, you know, and maybe had something that we didn't really have. He's got a little bit of spite about him, you know. He can obviously a great passer. Um, good so set pieces yeah, as well. you know, yeah. Um, I mean, so we signed Felipe. Um, obviously, another one with a great CV. You know, he's thirty three. Um, I kind of expected that maybe Steve Cook would leave uh, and that it would be kind of almost like a like for like swap. So, you know, maybe one of our weaknesses this this year has been, well, it has been, it's not maybe, you know, our centre-backs have been vulnerable to pace, you know. I mean, I love Joe Wall. I hate seeing Joe Wall being criticised on Twitter. You know, I love the guy. But any team watching our matches, any analyst for an opposition team would be realising that he can get isolated. Ori- Aurier bombs on. If he can get behind Aurier... Basically, Joe La- Joe Wall on his own can be v- vulnerable when he's isolated. No, he's just on the turn pace. So I kind of was expecting them to sign a a fast centre half. Now I'm not saying Felipe isn't fast, but he is 33, so I'm not kind of not expecting that he's going to be, you know, Des Walker fast. <laughs> so that would be interesting because you know we, we um, that's just been a part of you know that you know especially at the start of the season we. we people were getting behind us like far too easily. So, 
so that that's been a little bit of a of a tough point for us basically i was wondering whether do you think this transfer window is a reaction to the start of the season where maybe it was a bit i don't know wet behind the ears a bit naive and they were they were cut open too much so this transfer window they've gone for a bit more experience in terms of the players they bring in um possibly but but equally at the start of this the start of the, i mean I, when you look back at the championship squad obviously half of the outfield players left as we all know then Bree Samba left um you know pretty much straight away so all of a sudden you look through the squad and i mean i mentioned joe wall there and again i you know i hate seeing criticism of the guy you know to play as he has done for forest and represent the club he has in such a way he's been brilliant you know um, Ryan Yates has probably been the best player this season, but it's there. There isn't much. There wasn't much last season. The, the the entire squad needed rebuilding. You know, a lot of it was vital. You know, if if we would we would be bottom of the league if we hadn't brought in these. You know, a lot of these players. You know, Brennan, Brennan obviously um, is played regularly. Uh, Yates, Wallows got back into the team, but this this you know there's not much else really that 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 is evident from last season. Which was one of the hard factors because that team last season was so likable, yeah. And like we all kind of like because they're, they're, they're all playing every week, the the crowd really embraced them. Obviously, we you know we all did, and and all of a sudden it was a bit weird, you know. Like I mean, obviously I'm bringing up my son as a Forest, but you know I had I had heroes when I was a kid, and those heroes would be at Forest for sort of like you know five ten years, and you really felt like you kind of affinity to them. And like these days, that you know young football fans don't don't really get the same, you know. So so. That team broke up, and then at the start of the season, you were just like trying to kind of build affinity with players that you didn't really know, and um, you know, so that's taken a little bit of time, really. You know, um, it's taken. You know, Lottie took his time to settle in. You know, so a lot of criticism for him. You know, Oreo arrived, and kind of, like I said earlier, you know, people sort of weren't hugely infused by it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, possibly, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, if I mean, it was Steve Cooper who wanted Steve Cook in when we were in when, when we were in the championship. And the recruitment team and the chief executive at the time were not totally sure because it went against the model of what they were trying to build. But they wanted to please Steve Cook and they wanted to kind of reward him, I suppose, for you know the work he was doing. And so they kind of almost made that an exception. Whereas I think we're going to go back to that. You know, with the recruit, the you know the previous chief execs now involved again. You know, I think we're just basically. I mean, there's plenty to enjoy at Forest. You, you, everyone has a few questions about some of the stuff that happens, but. You know, it's hard to complain when Steve Cooper's done what he's done. You know, we're 13th, you know, basically. Yeah. Um, um, one of my bosses said to me yesterday, you know, why is Navas coming for a relegation fight? And I was like, yeah, I mean, deep down, we all know he's done a relegation fight. But I was a bit like, we're 13th, you know, we're not like stranded yeah. at the bottom. You know, the season's gone really well, really. I mean, it's like, you know, it's been low, low points and there might be more low points. You know, we might... You know, it's a struggle. It's like such a hard league. You know, I think, um, please don't take this the wrong way, but obviously I see a lot of the Premier League and I knew it was going to be a massive leap. And I think some some fans didn't quite realise like the gulf between everything. And just like the whole changes, like the the media scrutiny, the, you know, the intent, you know, getting slaughtered on talk sport every week. You know, it kind of, you just got to let these things like wash, wash yeah. over you sometimes. They don't matter. Actually, they don't matter. It's, yeah. it's outside noise. You know, you can't, you know, yeah. a lot of these managerial courses, they're all, you know, cliche of control the controllables. And, you know, it. Th- this is the way it is basically. But but the, the difference, you know, we saw it when Man United came in the, in the, in the league. We saw it at Man City um, in the away game where I thought, you know, I tried to put a brave face in it, but, I've seen a lot of teams getting pummeled at Man City, but but also kind of like you could see what they were doing. For, for, you know, Forest were really weak that night. You saw it when Man United came in the semi final, and it was you know it was just it was it was it was tough that first twenty minutes. You know, it, it was a three nil. You know, a few people said to me it's such a shame about that last goal, but three nil wasn't unfair really on the scoreline. I, I know about the the sewage goal, and I, you know the whole VAR thing is just. That's another subject, but but yeah, there might be more tough moments ahead. We we might not win any, any of the next six games, but I but there is very good grounds for optimism. And I think I'll always feel that while Steve Cooper's the manager, I just feel like you know he he is he has got a certain magic 
um, just everyone always uses, you know, he gets the club, but he, he does, but also people can get the club, but not have that ability to, to, um, to make good players, better players and, you know, very good players, excellent players, and sometimes average players, good, you know, really good players. I mean, I, I mean this in a nice way, but Ryan Yates, a lot of people question whether he would be good enough for the Premier League. A lot of people have really supported him. Describe, he's been described to me as he'll have a good career in the Championship. And that's yeah. why people who've worked with him for years. And and I remember that, because I remember thinking, you know, if we go up, you know, he's probably going to be one of the ones there, you know, that will drift to the edges. He's been brilliant. And, and like, you know, a lot of that goes, a lot of that's because of the boy himself and who he, he who he is and his the way he is. But a lot of that's the Steve Cooper effect, you know. If Steve Cooper had been sat in October, I was kind of thinking, how's Morgan Gibbs? Would we see Morgan Gibbs White as we're seeing Morgan Gibbs White now? You know, Morgan Gibbs White is unbelievable. I'm. It's like it reminds me of like when I was a like a young a kid going to watch Forest and seeing these, um, seeing like proper top players at Forest because uh, you know to me he should be in England squad and he, and he will be yeah. at some point. Right. If you he think he's that back, good? He's been absolutely. He's been brilliant. He's got a few things to add. You know, he could get a few more goals, but he didn't have. He, he took a little time to get going. But the last before the World Cup, after the World Cup, he's been, he's been. He he is. The, you know, for keeping fit, he he gives me more in, encouragement than anyone that we that we can stay up. Um, I was thinking before the World Cup, um, you know, with various people chatting on on here about. Are there three worst teams? And before the World Cup, I started off in August thinking, yeah, yeah, there are definitely three worst teams. Then as it got towards the World Cup, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure there are three worst teams <laughs> now. And now yeah. it feels like there are probably five or six worse teams than Forest. Not just obviously in the table, because at the moment there are, but yeah. there are some that, to be fair, a bit like Forest did before the World Cup, there are some that look, have a feeling of doom about them. Everton is obviously is is one yeah. and Bournemouth, although they spent a lot of money, might be might be another. Do you do you judge that there are three worse so far should steer clear now? I this will sound very unprofessional when I'm meant to be obviously a professional journalist, but it gives me a lot of encouragement with my fan hat on when you see like cri- moments of crisis at other clubs. So Everton are going for it at the moment. Um you know Everton had to sell Anthony Gordon because they're in financial issues you know new stadium ffp you know they, you'll notice they didn't go out and sign anyone back so they've actually weakened from a team that wasn't very good anyway you know they you know they brought in a manager who who could you know Ever- everton have been in these dodgy positions before and always seem to get out that's the thing and southampton have had you know southampton fans singing about the new manager you know unpopular um right from the start you know they clearly didn't want him so I'm sort of, you know, with my again my fan hat and sort of like rubbing my hands almost thinking, you know, it's mm. lovely to see these kind of like moments of crisis and it doesn't involve my club, you know, because and Bournemouth again, um, you know, the new manager had like this honeymoon period and then but those honeymoon periods can be really deceptive sometimes, you know. We, I mean, we've seen that as well, you know, that, you know, teams start well. Sometimes it's a reaction to who's left as well, and then and then the team sort of just goes, you know, very quickly downhill basically. So so Yes, as it stands. Um, the problem we've had this season is that there isn't really like a really bad team or or two really bad teams. There are not very good teams, but there's not like a kind of team that's sort of relegated by, you know, you, you can tell they're going down by October. Um, some people thought that was us, funnily enough. Yeah, you know, cause obviously and Leicester. You know, after, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to be, but then you look at Leicester and you think they've got James Madison, they've got Vardy, they've yeah. got Harvey Barnes, they've got, you know, Leicester have got problems. And Leicester, you know, Leicester look like bottom six team, but, you know, there's issues there. Again, man, the, the, the crowd have had a, a lot of the crowd have had enough of their manager. And you, and you just think, like, well, Forrest have got like this real, Forrest have, Forrest have got this proper sense of togetherness, which I think is quite important, you know, like, and it shows in the home form, which is probably what's going to, hopefully keep us up you know so we don't have the issues that some of the other clubs have um a lot of those other clubs are the ones that kind of moan and whinge about you know what we do in the transfer market and um you know and, you know we've we've made ourselves unpopular sometimes but that's not necessarily a bad thing yeah um 
you touched on Steve Cooper. I wonder whether when we look back, maybe in 10 years' time, and we look back up this season as the first one being up, the key decision wasn't which players came in or what the strategy was or refereeing decisions or whatever. It was the decision to keep Steve Cooper, to give him an extended contract, because that flew in the face of, I think, what everybody was expecting and also the traditions of the owner, certainly in Greece, and what Forrest have done in the last 15, 20 years. Uh, yes, although I'd also... I, I I also just go back to a fundamental point of if you've got a good manager, do you just stick with that good manager? And we should have known enough about Steve Cooper already to realise that we had a manager with something special. And so the fact he his position was even... Uh, well, it wasn't in doubt. I mean, the club were talking to, you know, people to replace him. It was leaked that, you know, it was leaked that he was, you know, basically going to get the sack, which if you're Steve Cooper, you know, like, I mean, I felt sorry for him at that point. You know, there were some things that went on that shouldn't really shouldn't have happened. Um, fortunately, some of those people are, you know, um, the people leaking those stories, that, you know, the, they've changed the media department, changed the media department quite a lot of times this, this since promotion, but... You know, let's hope that that episode is was a one-off, basically. But, but yeah, um, it very was very close to happening. And I think if there was a, a better candidate out there, because at that time there, there wasn't. That was one of the you know that they they tried with some really big names. You know, maybe they were a little bit too ambitious. But um, the people they were left with were, were sort of like Benitez, Sean Dyche. The fan the fans were kicking off, understandably. You know, I. Um, Journalists were writing that it shouldn't happen. There was like, you know, big noise. And it, they were in danger of kind of losing that togetherness that had been fostered for so for so long. So so I so I kind of think it was a mistake to even go. I mean, like you, you have to be really naive to think that Forest were going to come up. And I think there were some people in the building who, who genuinely thought we, we could be top six. I, mean, I know mm. there were, there, because people were talking about it. And it's like, you've got to get real. It's like the, the, the Premier League is like ruthless, you know, we, and we learned that really quickly and and again like I said earlier we, we might have we might not win any of the next six games but you just got to realize you've got to trust in your manager and but then after that we we might come through it you know it's like that, that's what happens to teams that come up you know we came up in the playoffs we hardly had any time to prepare we had to bundle all these players together it's never been done it's amazing that we're 13 for now and yeah I mean of course it, it that decision to to abandon the idea was 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 massive. I mean, but not just abandon the idea, you know, but also to give him a new contract. So it wasn't just saying you're safe for now. It was cards yeah, on the have, table. They, they you're the manager had, for the future. Had, yeah, they. I mean, they kind of had to. I mean, there's there's been a few politics behind the scenes, and so basically, Steve Cooper was very very unimpressed that someone from Forest leaked about the contract stuff, and there was a big inquest and. You know, there were there were all sorts of things. There were people briefing stories in newspapers about him when, you know, without his authority, without him knowing, there was stuff going on that should never have gone on. And but the contract situation was he was he he'd, he'd been coming up to the end of his contract otherwise. And Steve, you know, Steve Coop. I mean, it's not just me and you and Forest fans noticing the amazing job he's done. You know, like any any club that if he didn't have that contract, then. Well, maybe Everton's a bad example because why would he go to Everton? But in 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 normal times, you would expect a club like Everton size or or you know a, I don't know a club that you would expect a club that a sort of established Premier League club higher up than Forest in theory would be coming in for Steve Cooper. You know, um, Brighton big fans of his, Southampton big fans of his. So you know if we hadn't if we hadn't gone up, there'd be, if there'd have been a lot of approaches for Steve Cooper. You know the whole thing about. Um, the whole thing that Gary Lineker raised on Match of the Day about, you know, could he be the next England manager? It's not impossible. I hate saying no. that, but, you know, he he's he's in the FA system. Obviously won the, you know, the under-17s World Cup with the FA. You know, he he's come through that system. That sort of thing really matters to the FA, you know, because there's, you know, it's they really like to kind of reward their own and they bring their own people through. And, you know, it, so, you know, I really hope it doesn't because... You it's know, an amazing transformation, isn't it? From where, yeah, yeah, from where it was a couple of months ago, suddenly people are talking about whether he might be the next England manager. Well, 
uh, we're thirteenth in the in the Premier League, and people and he he's had to do a job that nobody else has had to do, and he's had to bundle all these people together. I love the way you know he's changed this. He, he likes playing wing backs. You know, we signed Nico Williams. But Fulham looked. Fulham had Nico Williams, but they didn't want him. To, they didn't go through with signing him because they didn't think he was the greatest for back four. But, but so Forrest came in because we play wing backs. So now, but we've kind of abandoned that and gone to the back four, and he's kind of gone against what he likes, just to because he knew he had to change because we couldn't carry on as we were, you know. Which not all managers do that. Some managers are stubborn, and you know we've had managers ourselves like that, you know, who don't have a plan B. Whereas Steve Cooper's shown that he does. I mean, it's funny. I can remember when when we were taking when we were bringing him in. So, dis- well, despite recent attempts to sort of rewrite history. He was always number one choice with Dave Murphy and the recruitment team. And they did this kind of like data profile to sort of show the hierarchy, you know, why he should be the guy. And, you know, they had seen Chris Wilder, who basically taken a team up. And obviously, the, the, you, know, that, you know, that obviously helps, you know, like, we, you know, we took on Karanka, Martin and Nilkes of their promotions. Um, but the the big worry for Dave Murphy and the, and the was the style of play, ironically. And if you remember back like all the Swansea fans on Twitter coming out saying you know I feel sorry for you Forest fans you know it's such a dreary watch and um, there were three factors they liked the fact that he improved teams that he loved working with young players but the third factor was the worry which was that the style of playing might not be particularly appealing and like I mean we we play a really nice style of play when when we can you know um, no, it's there's not well. I don't think any Forest fans have got any complaints. Put it that way. No. So, yeah. So he's he's. I mean, in a nutshell, he, he's been amazing. Um, I still there's been a big debate really recently on Twitter. You know, is he the best manager we've had since Brian Clough? I still no, say that's actually going to be my next. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah. Next well, thank, listen, I, I'm biased because I was of the. I missed the glory years. My first game was '82. Like shit timing. But I. <laughs> I, um, I but I was old enough just like to get permission, basically to go to go to those European trips, and you know we're promoted third in the league. First, it's amazing when you think back on it. I still delude myself that if Stan Collymore hadn't got injured in November, that we actually might have had to go to the title. But even though we finished quite a bit behind the top, but um, I think Collymore got injured. We didn't score a goal in November, and you know that was the kind of month, the the one bad month of the season. But you know, last team in Europe, just the adventures of going away. You know, like. Malmo via Copenhagen, like great kind of trips when you were kind of that age and sort of, you know, getting basically, it was kind of like the trips for the people of my generation that we that we were too young to go with the um, the proper glory years. So I'm kind of like really reluctant, and I've, I know Frank as well, so I'm kind of reluctant to kind of, but yeah, the fact it's, the fact it's up for consideration is, um is brilliant basically these are these are great times you know it's as i said earlier you know it's a bit unorthodox sometimes it's still a, well it still can be quite emotionally volatile behind the scenes you know they they they're very knee jerk sometimes they've made me i mean forget i mean let's remember where we were before steve cooper came you know four years in we were bottom of the championship and it was yeah there's a lot of a lot of flag flying about and you know i was questioning them a lot of fans were questioning them there was there was there were reasons to question them, and obviously, and you know, so so we've gone from it's fifteen months ago we were we were bottom of the and yeah, it seems years basically. ago, doesn't it? It does seem years ago. Well, it's like it's like another world away, and and yeah, I mean, it's just bizarre. Basically, and the thing is, if we if we stay up now, then we've got um, the basis. Um, we need to move out some players, but we've got the basis though of. A really good squad, and also just building on it next summer. I don't mean like another twenty on no. players, but you know, you bring in another teams will see. It. Some players didn't want to come to us because they thought it was too much of a risk. So I think if we stay up, they wouldn't. That wouldn't happen this time, and we get a better kind of a player coming to us. So if you kind of even, you know, so we had to go to say like Wolves for a player that had been on the, in the championship last time. You know, now we can actually try and you know. So we, you know, we brought in. A play from PSG on loan, you know, like if we stay up next summer, you know, we we can we can aim we we can try and get a pl- player, possibly a reserve at PSG, but still like a really good player because they don't have bad players on a permanent signing. You know, we, yeah. we don't have to kind of, you know, what I mean, like we can upgrade and we can we can actually try and build a squad because 
I mean, we could have signed the Croatian. This is what I mean. Like, we could have signed, signed the Croatia keeper um, when Bree Samba left. Now, none of us really knew much about him at the time. He went on to become one of the stars of the World Cup, but we could have gone for five years. But we went for Dean Henderson. Don't get me wrong, Dean Henderson's been really good, really like him, can see what he's brought to the squad. And a part of that is the kind of, there was a bit of a fascination at the top of the club with dealing with the big clubs and Dean Henderson's a bit, you know, Dean Henderson's a bit of a more attractive proposition to them than a five-year contract for a Croatia international. But over the course of those five years, might might it almost have been better in hindsight to get the guy on a long-term basis, you know. So we can, I don't know, we, hopefully we can maybe sort of start thinking a little bit more about the structure going forward um, because, you know, we're going to have to replace quite a few players again, these lone players, yeah. quite a few goalkeepers. Yes. What they have done, it seems to me, is, and I can't remember which manager it was, it might have been like a, a Paul Hart type going back who said yeah. what you need to do is bring players in at the top of the squad you know, in the top two or three. Yeah. When, so when you bring somebody in, I don't think he quite managed it with Danny Sonner, to be fair, and bring Gunnarsson, but yeah. um, it, it, you bring players in at the top of the squad and it just, it pushes everybody down a bit, but it also gives everybody else a bit of a lift, i.e. we're aiming this high rather than yeah, possibly, this yeah. high. And well, they seem to have done that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, everyone's been saying, like, I'm just, I'm not sure what Dean Henderson thinks of, of the new goalkeeper arriving from PSG. You know, there's... But, if you're a Forest player, if you're like Brennan Johnson or someone like that, yeah. who, or, or imagine like imagine Joe Warrell. I mean, Joe Warrell's quite open about this. So I'm sure if, imagine that Joe, in fact, Joe Warrell actually was on the pitch at Wembley and described the previous five years as shite. You know, so so Joe Warrell's quite open. Imagine, that, imagine some of the players that Joe Warrell has seen drift through, make themselves incredibly rich on the back of Forest and then leave without a good a backward glance. And then Joe was looking around the dressing room now, and there's like a you know a free time Champions League winner from PSG just arrived. You know, it's it makes you raise your game if there's um, you know if, if if basically you know it would it in a, in a way <laughs> it it would make well I was going to say Jordan Smith, but as we as we're talking, I think he he might be in the course of leaving. But even mm-hmm. someone like Jordan Smith, you know, imagine imagine like yeah. the stuff he can learn from from playing with you know. You know Navas coming in. It's like, um, you know, it's the, yeah, of course. I mean, it's it, it's much better that way than signing. Like I say, I mean, we go back to when we were trying to get promotion, that, and we brought in Bong, Dear Carby, De Costa, who whose Forest career finished with one goal, an own goal, um, yes. and you know to keep um, Forest out of the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh God, I'm trying to try to block that one out of the memory. There's been a lot of years I've tried to block out of the memory, to be honest. I was going to ask whether there was a point, talking about that, whether whether there was a point where you thought, do you know what, I don't think they're ever going to do it. <laughs> uh, um, I, I hope not. Um, so I, I, I moved up from, from Nottingham, well, Notts, to Manchester because of my job to cover United and City sort of, 20 years ago, well, 25 years ago now, which I'm feeling like a veteran, veteran. I went to the World Cup and um, it's pointed out to me, I'm now a veteran reporter. It's my sixth World Cup and wow. it's, like, it's quite scary how quickly, yeah, yeah, but it's quite scary how um, how all of a sudden you, you go from thinking like you're still one of the young lads to, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going off on a tangent, but I hope not because I brought my son in Manchester, which you can imagine is not easy at all. I brainwashed him from a very early age. Mm-hmm called in all sorts of favours. Like I remember Lewis Grabin sending him a Christmas card and <laughs> yeah, yeah, Valio sending him a voice message on his birthday. And I put it like, I, I brainwashed him. I left, well, I left, left him with no choice because there, there was, there was absolutely no way I was going to let him not support Forrest and successfully, you know, at times it felt a bit cruel. Um, you know, like the, the, um, that game you just mentioned with DeCosta when we lost to Stoke and, you know, I can remember just being, gutted afterwards because obviously I want my son to to see some of the stuff that I saw I want mm. all the younger Fox fans that have been for all this crap it's just like amazing we've kept the fan base as we have because that's that's the biggest thing for me about about what we've achieved that basically at least, all these people have had nothing at least I actually had all those like Wembley trips and you know Nigel Clough Stuart Pearce sort of Des Walker and then obviously later on the Frank Clark years, you know, so I've, I've, I've had great, you know, my childhood was a happy, happy yeah. football childhood. 
um, was I've subjected my son to something differently until the last couple of years, you know. So, so I can remember going to his first away game was Huddersfield and we were losing in the first minute and then it was 3-0 after, I think five minutes after the second half and he's just, you know, he's six years old and like the ground's laughing at us and, <laughs> yeah. and like, you know, like Man United and Man City, are, you know, doing great things probably, or maybe not United, but um, I remember going to the FA Cup tight wig and we had that one where Montani, where the team, where the, it yes. was like the it one, was the, the full one nil, made the it changes. Was like the worst. Basically, didn't, didn't at half time the players just basically just decided they were going to pick the didn't, pick their formation themselves yeah. and ignore didn't Eric Lehigh happened. move himself from. I yeah, think it was Matt yeah. Cash was and, and well beaten and switch fullbacks or something. I can't remember it, exactly. It, it was the most. I've, I've never been to a game where where I've seen a team deliberately trying to get rid of the manager as much as that one. Um, and it was at Wigan, so it was a, so the so it was like the ground was like a fifth full. Yeah, there was nobody um, there, was it? It was soul destroying that day. Uh, and, and I'm like trying to tell my son, it's oh, this is good, isn't it? <laughs> and like buying, <laughs> buying McDonald's on the way home to try and like improve the day and stuff. And like, but I'm just thinking, like, he's had absolutely none of the fun that I've had. So, you know, like, I mean, we we're on holiday during, um, the playoff final, and I flew. I mean, I spent an absolute. It was ridiculous. Spent an absolute fortune to fly us back, fly us, fly us, and then fly us out again. Um, just a ridiculous day of like travel, like and like no, just utterly ridiculous because I just wanted him to actually and see something enjoyable with Forest, and finally we've got that. So, you know, but the last, oh god, I mean, I I genuinely have the Gary Megson years. I've I've, it's like pulp. I've kind of like I can't remember individual games. I can just remember like just sort of being cold to it in the end. Just like, um, and then obviously as you as you know, Billy Billy came back and oh, did he? I didn't you know, notice. That, yeah, yeah, that boy is that that was a that was a peculiar experience. And then the Fawaz years, and then also the to be fair, the start of the Maranakis years were were kind of all over the place. You know, just. Just it took them a long time to realise, you know, it's not it's not how you how you run football in Greece isn't how you run it in England, and you know the Greek chief executive caused a lot of issues, and it's but yeah, the Fowers years, Jesus Christ, I mean, you know, the gra- ground was falling to pieces, yeah, couldn't buy anyone, we were transfer embargo, basically dropping down every, I mean, I mentioned Jordan Smith earlier, like, I mean, they used to have the um, Yanis, the old. Chief exec used to have a picture in his on his wall, and it was, it was that saved by Jordan Smith, and he'd signed it and put a little message on. I mean, you dread to think where it would have been wow. if if he, yeah, because if if we'd gone behind in that game, can I, I'm allowed to swear. We, I'm allowed to swear on, yeah, your, yeah. on your esteem. Uh, we, we, you you oh, absolutely. We were absolutely. We were gone. The the crowd the crowd would have gone because the, we were just so kind. There was such a doomed mentality at that time. The t- the players would have just collapsed. It probably would have ended up losing like three or four now, and and so so yeah, you know that. I mean, he's not played much in his twenty years with us, but you know that man deserves a, a statue. Because from, from, <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. the other thing is, I mean, um, to be fair, they've always said that they would have carried on with the takeover. Um, yeah, had they, Forrest they gone would, down to they League would. One, they've always said that, but they, we'll never absolutely yeah. know because they never did go down, but. They, um, no, no, but they, 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 they were there that day. Though. Yeah, they were they were they were sitting there that day. Where basically, with you know, it was it was kind of done, really. The um, so yeah, but I mean, c- can you imagine the? Can you, I'm not sure they would have enjoyed League One. You know, when they when they first when they first came to the club, there were pictures of the league when when we got promotion with Colin Coldwood. There were pictures of the. Um, team on just I think it's on a staircase in the sort of office block you know just one picture and they were kind of almost disgusted because they right. you know because because they just saw that as they didn't see that as success or something to celebrate you know they they you know I think like I feel like people like Chris Cohen they couldn't understand why Chris Cohen was was seen as like this sort of it, I'd, 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 maybe I shouldn't have picked out Chris Cohen but you know like people that were sort of seeing these popular popular um to, to the younger generation when obviously Forrest had been you know so they they kind of ushered in the the miracle men and they loved all that but but they just they basically they just thought our last 20 odd years was just nothing to celebrate and they're kind of well, right, they were right. They, you know yeah, yeah spot on yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but but um, obviously like 
if it, if you're a younger fan, that's all you've had. It's basically yeah. all you've had. Like so, I mean, I mean, people forget like Karanka was. People forget the movement to save Karanka when he was when he was well he resigned because he couldn't take any more. But people forget like how popular he was just because we were kind of like hovering around the top six. That's what I mean about the younger fans. They've they've had they've had so little. I'm so glad finally they can enjoy it. You know, um, you, you, well, you know, um, just watch match of the day. Actually, you know, just actually, you know, experience some. You know, Forest being part of it. You know, it's you know, it's still not quite the same. You know, we're not we're not going to Wembley every year, and you know, it's a bit gutty what happened in the semi final. But yeah, I mean, Fowers, Billy, just. I mean, at some point, I, I will hopefully, I haven't got time at the moment because of my work, but at some point, I'd love to write a book about that kind of period, that that whole, you know, that 20 years, because there's so much went on. Um, you know, like, just, um, I might need a little bit of help because, as I say, I've tried to, tried to kind of, like, airbrush a lot of it out of my mind. Yeah, that bookcase behind you could probably be full with one book of what's happened at Forest, I would think, in the last 20 years. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, there's... Um, yeah, this I, I, yeah, that does make me look like a bit of an anorak, doesn't it? My uh, football bookcase. <laughs> Most of them are red, so Work it's a good played. sign. Just finally to wrap things up, yeah, now, I want of, to talk yeah. about what talk yeah. about the future, and you know, not perhaps the the future in terms of staying up, but where you see Forest in in maybe two or three years' time, because clearly the owners are are ambitious and they don't see finishing seventeenth, seventeenth, sixteenth as a as a um, badge of honour. I'm kind of- yeah, I'm kind of, um, there's a don't don't there's a kind of a part of me that feels that I don't want to get giddy, <laughs> and I don't you know like this, I had mates at the start of the season sort of you know I knew it was going to be tough and I had a few friends sort of like just really thought because everyone was like riding on the crest, crest of the wave just thought that all that upward momentum would take us through and you know it's really hard you know like the Premier League it's almost like three leagues in itself you know just just to even to get into that middle that middle bracket and stay there of that kind of like what Brent, like how Brentford are doing. I'd be delighted yeah. to be, you know, for the fresh Man United this season, one at Man City, you know, at the moment, you know, we, when we play the top clubs, we get thrashed. You know, we, we lost six nil to, to city five, you know, five at I mean, Arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's th- those, those games become ordeals. You know, if we can become, I, I would be happy to be, to, to, as I say, I mean, it feels a bit weird because I still see us as so much bigger than Brentford, you know. And but but to do what Brentford have done and to be in that kind of pocket, like like to be where Brighton are. But Bright Brighton is run so much differently than Forest. You know, Brighton Brighton is what Forest wanted to be about about a year ago. They wanted to basically find these players, sign them for five ten million, and then within a year they're being sold to seventy million to Arsenal, which. It's really a brilliant way of running a club of that size. Um, we're different. We just have to accept that. We, we, we're not, you know, we, we we do it in a different way. That's just, you know, just look at Olympiacos and how they do it, you know. So, so there's no point pining for that. We briefly toyed with that idea. It it kind of, I thought it was working. At the start of the season, it got removed. You know, we're back to how it was. But, we're, but Steve Cooper's got us up. So, you know, it's... It, where where might we be? We, the the owners want us in Europe. That was the five year plan. It wasn't the seven or eight year plan. They want so we're behind their plan. I would love the stand to be built. I can't see it being built this summer. Um, they've just renovated the changing rooms. Done a load of you know you don't renovate changing rooms if you've only got like six games left or whatever it is. Maybe more, a few more than that. But you don't you know if, if um, I think they have to take down the boat club first and rebuild it. And if you, you know, the boat clubs, the original boat club's still there. So before they can even start the stand. So, so in my head, I'm kind of thinking that the stand probably isn't going to be this summer. So when you visit, when you go to the ground now, like a mate of a journalist, mate of mine who hadn't been to fast 20 odd years, sent me a, you know, like mates do send me a message, basically taking the piss out of the ground when he went there yeah, the other day and, and, and kind of like, you know, as a fan, that kind of like stings a bit, even though you try and brush it off and stuff. You know? So we really need the stand built at some point. It's, it's really tricky because at the moment, home form is keeping us up. Yeah, I was just thinking and that. You don't want to lose that advantage. Especially, not at all. And that, that is like, you'd have three quarters of the ground. 
you can have a building site on one side. What I don't know, and this is because I'm not an engineer, structural engineer or, or architect, but Liverpool have, Liverpool have got around that by Liverpool have built two massive stands. The second one is not open here, but the, but the first one, and they built them behind the existing stands. So the fans just can still go in. Now, I don't know if there's not room to do that with Forest, but Liverpool have done that so well where it hasn't disrupted the team. But I just think like Forest playing in front of three quarters of a stadium, mm. you know, that is, that's, that's, it's not ideal, especially when no, it's the most important dressing rooms and, and but the, the atmosphere just, I don't know really. I mean, there's part of me desperately wants to see this stand built because we're, we're, you know, it, we're, be, we're so far behind, like facilities wise, you know, we, we're not making money from the ground during the week. You know, we could, you know, we don't have big, well, we, we do, but to a very small extent. I mean, you know, not even to the point where probably Derby are, are you know, in League One. Um, so it's, I don't know, I'm kind of trying to avoid your question of where we could be at. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, we could, we could, listen, we could, they, they're fiercely ambitious and they always have been from the past. No one can ever question their ambition, their money. They've got big pockets. We should be very, very grateful. It Sometimes for prolonged periods, they've gone about it the wrong way. And if they got rid of Steve Cooper, I would probably, we might be having that conversation again now because, you know, we've got a great manager. We're ambitious. We've got a great fan base. We're enjoying ourselves, even even though it's you know there have been difficult times this season. So it sounds a bit like a crappy sort of managerial cliched answer, but I just kind of like, I don't want to get too far ahead at the moment because I also know like how quickly things can change. And like, you know, if we, had, if we go on a bad run, which any team can do down, down the sort of in the second half of the, in the bottom half of the Premier League, then, you know, you, you, you back in it and basically uh, we're not out of it, you know, so, so, no. um, so yeah, I'm positive, but equally, I don't really want to be like making all sorts of like, oh, you know, we can be top six and stuff, you know, let's be, let's aim for where Brighton and Brentford are and, and also be nice to kind of like, go to these big clubs and actually give them a proper game, which we, we haven't really done that yet. Um, you know, we went to Old Trafford and played badly. You know, it'd be really nice, you know, to go to Anfield in April and, and and you know, really just sort of see the development of us, hopefully. But... We will see. Anyway, you haven't, told me, you, haven't, you haven't told me off yet. Come on, you haven't told me off yet for the obliging local media. I feel like you've been waiting 20, 20 years to get this... No, I, I, to be honest, I'd, I'd not even, I'd not even remembered that. When did you write that? I do remember you writing it, but I, I can't remember what it was about. Was it I thought, We need, to, yeah, we need to inform. I thought that I, I had upset you one time because during the Billy days, where I, but I, the whole Billy thing, Billy, Billy kind of killed Ray and Nottingham, didn't he? And he Second killed time. the Evening Post. Yeah. Yeah. Second time. First, this is the irony of it. The first time Billy came, I was campaigning for him to get the job. I mean, obviously Twitter and stuff wasn't really a thing then, but I'd seen what he'd done at Derby and I really wanted Billy to get that job. And so he got the job. Obviously he did really well for, um, you know, coaching. Why Everyone says like, he's a really good coach. He's great at getting the best of people, you know. Um, again, probably because we didn't really have much else to cling on to. Everyone remembers that West Brom game and the you know, we, we there were there were some good memories and stuff, and then it, yeah. then obviously, unfortunately, Billy being Billy, it turned to shit. Like obviously, his relationship with the club just collapsed. I mean, if they'd gone up, I was told that that Nigel Doughty would have got rid of him anyway and just disappeared to the Bahamas on his holiday <laughs> island and just you know yeah. escaped the flat because basically it got so political. I mean, you know all this, but anyway, I was nothing to do with that period. I, I'd moved up to Manchester, but. So when he came back and he and he decided to take his, you know, he obviously he thought that the local media had conspired against him. Yeah, and he hated all of you, didn't he? Let's yeah, I've no to this I, to this day I've no idea why. Well, this I, I will say for all your many podcast viewers, very hard to hate you, very hard to hate Paul Taylor. Some of the most inoc, you know, I mean innocuous in a nice sense. You, none of you, all you, all you want is for us to do well and to be able um, to do our jobs. Because, yeah, and to be able to do your jobs, but but yeah. but you have never plunged a knife in anyone's back, Forrest. It was a complete 
fabricate but not only that but he lumped me in with you with you guys and i was like <laughs> to be fair did? he lumped everybody so, in i think everybody was in together i don't think he was picking on he, anybody he, he he thought that i was that i was mates with mark arthur and because mark arthur was obviously he despised mark arthur i spoke to mark arthur once in my life and i rang him up and I'd criticised Mark Arthur loads of times, you know, like justifiably. And Mark Arthur's first words to me were, I thought you didn't like me. That was my one dealing with Mark Arthur. But Billy had got it in his head that I was... So basically, so I got, I ended up getting banned from Forest <laughs> and getting like, you know, put it on the website and all sorts of... Yeah. And like started. So Billy, who was obviously popular, had his sort of fan club. So I was getting all sorts of pelters from fans for, for because... Billy, Billy had lumped me in with, as you know, this local media that he he. So I, so this is coming full circle. So I, me being me, I'm not fucking having that. So basically, I wrote an article basically saying like what what's actually really going on there, and and I referenced because I knew you're all pissed off, but basically nobody locally because obviously you have to maintain relationships. Who I saw had really tackled it in terms of, you know, I thought the Evening Post should be doing comment pieces saying. You know, we're getting, you know, we're trying to give you proper coverage, but we're so I mentioned in a piece, and maybe it's a little bit catty, uh, maybe I was a bit frustrated, but I mentioned about the obliging local media. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I was told it went down like a sack of shit. <laughs> so, so maybe, oh, maybe, I, I, maybe all these years, maybe all these years later, I need to apologize. Basically. I've either forgotten I thought you, or, or, yeah, to, to maybe you're honest, scarred and you just don't. In, in that, Two no, it wasn't two years. In that year's period, you writing that was probably the least of the worries, <laughs> to be frank. Yeah, yeah, quite honestly. Yeah. A Scottish journalist mate of mine went to see Billy in and we've tried. We've we've actually tried to get in touch with him and say, Look, come and sit with us. And if you think we're gonna twist your words, we'll just put your we'll just run the transcript of what you say. Like, come and tell us why it will because the reason why we still talk about him and he still fascinates us is that he had so many good aspects to him. He was a bloody good football himself. manager. Yeah. What fascinates us about him is that he, he did have good parts. You know, like the, a lot of the players will talk, talk, but it's not just about that. You have to manage up. You have to, you have to, you have to deal with, you know, it's not just about like, are you a good coach? It's, it, there's more to that job. So and I've been guilty of this myself. Like, you know, I love the miracle man. I wrote, I wrote the book for the film. I've, you know, I've been guilty of myself harping back to the past because there's nothing to enjoy about the present. That's why we all did it. That's why we all, yeah. you know, in the late 80s and the early 90s when I was going to Wembley every year, people didn't talk about the European Cup winners because we were just enjoying the now. It was really weird. At school, I wasn't brought up on Forest as, oh, yeah, two European Cups. I was brought up on Forest like, you know, they're going to win the League Cup again. You know, like they've got they've got four England internationals. So it was later when we all started talking, when, when it became like, it's all we've really got left. It's like, it's, you know, it's the identity of the club, don't get me wrong. And I love those guys and always will love that story. It's amazing. But like, I do get, and it's been brought home to me a little bit more in the last, last two years, why some of the younger fans just want it. They're desperate to have some moments for now because they didn't have that. And they're probably sick of old fighters like me going on about like the stuff that they they've missed and you know so yeah we can live the present i don't think we need to talk about billy davis so much and even though it's me that brought him up and we don't need to um you know we don't need to hark back to the glory years quite as much as we were doing because we can actually enjoy the present again and it's been like a long time since we've been able to do that which which is the nice part of it because when you're sort of 16th in, in the championship which we've spent a lot of time in that position you do kind of end up like kind of thinking in you know there's you, you, there's not much to revel in basically apart from the the you know the the glory days my thanks to danny taylor for his fantastic insight now youtube next thinks you should watch this video i on the other hand think it should be this one but it's up to you